Good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday. We are now only one week from Christmas, so we're just about there, and then we get to look towards the new year. Uh, but before we do all that, we have to talk about the weather for next week, which still looks very interesting across a big portion of the eastern United States, uh, and I would even expect probably near blizzard conditions in a pretty big swath going into your holiday travel time next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So uh, real quick before we get to the weather, I want to just, I guess, give a huge shout out to everyone that watched the last video that I posted yesterday and everyone that subscribed I started yesterday at 84 subscribers, and I woke up this morning to 105 with um, my last video getting over 400 views, which is uh, something I'm very happy with and uh, I guess just proud to see and super excited about the future of this channel and seeing where we can take it. So uh, that's enough of that. Don't want to dwell too long. Let's go ahead and get right into the weather because we have a lot to talk about. So like normal, I'm going to go ahead and start with the deterministic model runs from overnight. We'll start with the Euro, just like we normally do. And overall, overnight, the trends, uh, there wasn't really a very clear trend. Uh, kind of still a pretty similar depiction on a lot of the models. Uh, again, like we've been talking about, uh, we'll start with this little low pressure system. It's going to move through the Gulf going into next Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll go ahead and finish it out on the Euro. Then I'm actually going to switch to the NAM real quick before we start talking about next week's big storm. Again, as you can see with the Euro, just like we talked about yesterday, some rain spreading up into the southeast, maybe as far north as western North Carolina, northern Georgia, and northern South Carolina, where you could just maybe see a little bit of a wintry mix out of this. And I'll show that to you on the NAM here. So uh, luckily we're now getting into the short range with this system, and uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier to look at the chances of actually seeing any kind of wintry precipitation out of it. So this is the NAM. I'll go ahead and show it to you. Again, pretty similar to the Euro. Uh, the NAM actually gets precipitation about as far north as Middle Tennessee, although I'm not really sure that a lot of this would be hitting the ground. A lot of it is probably evaporating before it actually gets there. Uh, but overall, again, the NAM is pretty precipitation heavy with this system. And uh, I mean, as you can see, you get a couple of these little pink and purple splotches across the mountains of western North Carolina and northern Georgia. So if you're from that area, if you live in that area, don't be too surprised going into Tuesday and maybe even Tuesday afternoon to see a little bit of a light wintry mix. Again, I wouldn't expect any travel travel troubles, but maybe you could get some light icing or light snow accumulations on elevated surfaces. So that system will get out of here by Wednesday, uh, which will really set the stage for our big storm going into Christmas week. So we'll go ahead and look at that on the Euro now. Again, uh, that little system moves out of the southeast going into Wednesday, and we set the stage for this Arctic cold front to begin to move into the plains. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, you're gonna get snow to break out across a pretty big portion of the Midwest with this, really a pretty big swath from Kansas, probably even Oklahoma, up to uh, the Great Lakes in Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin. But another thing we have to talk about with this, um, this front kind of really works with what's left over of that energy in the Gulf and helps to really bring up a lot of this Gulf and Atlantic moisture pretty far ahead of this front. Uh, and the big problem with that is that we still have a lot of leftover cold air from earlier in the week. So what you're going to get is you're going to get a lot of this to kind of run right up into what's left of that cold air. And you could start with a pretty good band of beginning snow and ice uh, into the mountains of the Virginias, maybe as far south as northern western North Carolina. But that band is going to ride all the way up into New England, and you're going to get a pretty good thumping on the first end of heavy snow before changing over to rain. And uh, on the other side of this, where the actual main cold front is, it's mainly going to be a back-end snow event for a lot of these areas. That swath from the Midwest will then begin to move likely over the Mississippi River Valley and into the Ohio Valley, where a lot of these areas are going to start as rain. Um, I mean, there's really going to be very few areas that are able to keep this system snow the entire time, according to the uh, you know the latest Euro run here. Uh, again, though, pretty similar to what we looked at yesterday, really just a powerful cold front here as the front really begins to push eastbound and wraps up all of that Atlantic moisture into New England with very heavy rainfall 
And of course, like I said, that beginning thumping of snow. So the hero begins, you know, this is uh, this is Friday morning, so the 23rd early on. Uh, it starts to get that cold front to push through the Appalachian chain here in the southeast where, once again, as we've been talking about, back in pretty good northwest flow here in the euro. Uh, Euro's not quite as bullish on the northwest flow as the GFS has been. But nonetheless, still snow in those areas. Uh, and this thing really begins to crank up over the Great Lakes. Uh, I mean, we're at 978 millibars here. And that's going to then push up into New England, going into your Friday, into Friday night here. Uh, again, a lot of rain for those areas, but some back-end snow showers as well. So that's the Euro. Again, pretty similar to yesterday's run. Go ahead and show the GFS now. GFS again, starting with this little system in the southeast, uh, as we showed with the NAM. The GFS actually gets this pretty pretty far north as well, as you can see. You're even getting some blue colors there into southwestern North Carolina. Uh, like I talked about yesterday, these things really like to overperform a lot of the time, so don't be surprised at all to see some flakes fly in those areas. Uh, moving this forward now to our big system. Uh, again, sets the stage pretty similar to how the Euro did. Pretty big swath of snow developing back in here as the cold front pushes down. GFS gets this a little bit more south. Uh, so you're getting really snow into the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma with the GFS here. As we move this forward, once again, same thing that we talked about. This cold front's going to work with the Gulf of Mexico here begin to bring up a lot of moisture, which is going to really help to produce a pretty good amount of QPF here. Uh, and again, same thing like the Euro, you're running into that dome of cold air that's left over, so pretty good front end thumping of snow starting really all the way back into Virginia, West Virginia, with maybe even some icing, and then snow moving up into Pennsylvania, New York, and into a lot of New England. I wouldn't be surprised to see really a couple of inches fall with this first thumping before you change over to rain. Uh, GFS is still further south with this low here near the cold front. Uh, it's more into Kentucky. And again, we'll look at the ensemble members like we have in the past two videos after this. But really a similar story, heavy rain in the southeast and really honestly the northeast as well after that first thumping of snow. And then this cold front really cranks up over the Ohio River Valley and you get the cold front to push through, get that northwest flow in the mountains that we've been talking about. Timing here, this is still Friday here on the GFS, going into Friday afternoon, and uh, a pretty good healthy swath of back in snow into the Ohio River Valley, and uh, something the GFS has been showing on and off that we'll have to watch out for, is it's been getting snow, and even on a good amount of its ensemble members, as far as south as really this area, seeing some back in snow showers. So we'll see if that can develop. I wouldn't be surprised to see snow fly in these areas. I wouldn't expect a lot. Like, you know, I could probably even include sections of North Georgia into that. Uh, but again, I wouldn't be surprised to see snow fly in those areas uh, in some way, shape, or form. But it wouldn't really be anything too crazy. But it would always, of course, be fun to see snow this time of year. So GFS, uh, like the Euro, pulls that low north into Canada and really gets out of the country by about, back that up a little, sorry. Uh, about Christmas Eve is whenever most of the worst weather should be out of the way. Uh, one thing we'll also have to watch for with the back end of this low cranking is some pretty good lake effect maybe going into New York, Pennsylvania, and Michigan on the back end of this. And, uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that, of course. Uh, another thing with the GFS here, uh, and I haven't even really looked at this before now, to be honest with you, so we're going to kind of look at this together. Uh, and shout out to my good friend Mitch West. He's been talking about this a lot. He's really um, kind of the first one to jump on it, really, is potential of maybe a second wave after this one that would be more likely to produce some kind of wintry weather in the southeast. Luckily, you know, it's still about 170 hours out here, but there's a ton of energy flying around, as Mitch likes to say. Uh, so we'll definitely have to see if any of that can, you know, work together and maybe get some kind of low pressure. But, you know, GFS shows maybe a little, little something over here. Uh, but we'll talk more about that uh, once we can kind of get through this first system. 
All right, so let's go ahead and go to the ensemble members. We'll start with the Euro like we did with the deterministic model. Again, low pressure moves through the southeast going into Tuesday and Wednesday, which is going to then set the stage for this massive cold front, which, of course, all the ensembles are pretty much in agreement on that here with the Euro. And what the Euro does is develops that low pressure with its ensembles pretty close to where its deterministic model run is. Uh, it has, you know, as far south and east as Nashville and as far north as, you know, the, the UP of Michigan. So still a good amount of spread between the members, but overall pretty good clustering around the Ohio River Valley on the EPS. And then that moves up into Canada and we'll get this super cold high pressure to funnel in behind it. So a pretty similar story there to yesterday. So we're not going to go too much into that. Sorry if I get that to stop. All right, uh, GEFS now, so the uh, American Models Ensembles. Again, paints pretty similar picture, low pressure moving through the southeast, going into Tuesday and Wednesday. Massive cold front pushing through the plains, and the GFS here, as you can see, is further south and further east with its ensemble members. So uh, this is pretty different than the Euro, but honestly, it's clustered better than the EPS ensemble members are. So the GFS ensembles are in better agreement with themselves than the Euro ensemble members are. And uh, the, GF, the GEFS begins to really crank that up into Kentucky and going into Ohio before eventually pulling off into Canada. And once again, that super cold high pressure funnels in behind it. So that's the GEFS ensemble members. Uh, let's go ahead and look at something I haven't talked about yet, which is the wind. Uh, I'm going to use the National Weather Service blend of models here to look at this. So these are wind gusts. These are not sustained winds, uh, but it, it'll give a pretty good idea of what all the models are kind of thinking about uh, in terms of winds with this system. So as you can see, going into next Thursday, this is that cold front beginning to push down south and east uh, across the plains. Definitely some 40 to maybe even 50 mile an hour gusts in sections as this cold front really begins to crank up and push the south and east. And this is going to be pretty widespread winds here across the eastern portion of the United States. This is Friday afternoon. And I mean, you've got wind gusts of 35 really stretching from Missouri to, to Maine in a pretty large swath with, you know, areas a little lower than that, around 30. But uh, really, of course, it's going to depend where exactly that low pressure decides to form. Uh, but right now with the model swinging kind of the Ohio River Valley, that area I would expect to get you know the worst winds wouldn't be surprised to maybe even see some gusts uh, up and around 50 miles an hour in the first spots uh, this windy weather is going to then push into the northeast before eventually clearing out going into christmas eve and christmas day so another thing we'll look at here are the temperatures because uh, either way if you're east of the mississippi and you're not getting snow out of this uh, you're still definitely going to get a very cold christmas so if that's something you're looking for, that is something you're going to get and hopefully enjoy. Uh, so this is going to be Saturday. So Saturday morning here. This is right after the cold front pushes through and that system moves out of the eastern United States. But these are lows for Christmas Eve morning. And here into the Ohio River Valley, single digits with sub-zero temperatures, getting as far south as St. Louis and Indianapolis on Christmas Eve morning. Uh, further into the south, uh, teens and 20s further along the coast and in the mountains, probably definitely some single digits here in western North Carolina and up into the Virginias. And that is going to continue. Highs uh, going into Christmas Eve afternoon. A lot of areas are going to struggle to break uh, freezing. Um, I wouldn't put the line quite this far south. It'll probably be more like this in the areas that are really going to struggle to break freezing on Christmas Eve. But this cold pattern is really going to lock itself in, uh, and you're going to keep this around going through Christmas and into you know the days following Christmas. All right, so the last thing we're going to look at here this morning are going to be the snowfall predictions from, again, this is National Weather Service blended model, so all the models kind of just thrown together, and we'll go ahead and see what this is projecting. So again, as you can see, that cold front 
really begins to push through going into Thursday. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a pretty good swath in here of three to five inches as uh, you get that um, precipitation that kind of forms from the cold front itself. Now, once you get the low pressure to develop and that moves through, you can kind of see the uh, bullseye that is setting up for most of the models here, which once again is going to be the Ohio River Valley here uh, and really the Great Lakes regions. With You can see all this lake effect from as that low or as that low pushes up into Canada and you get that back end wind. You're going to get a lot of lake effect here in Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio. And all these regions, I guess you would normally expect to see it, but definitely some uh, lake effect enhanced snow. Uh, you're also going to get some pretty good northwest flow here into Appalachia, uh, especially into the Virginias, but uh, really as far south as western North Carolina. Uh, model here showing anywhere from two to four inches in those areas with maybe more going into the higher elevations of West Virginia. Uh, and once again, that back end snow, a lot of the models here you know, could see maybe some flakes fly in this region. This is more of a question mark right now. It depends how far south we can get the low pressure to form. Uh, if it kind of forms here and then goes up, it's going to be a lot more difficult than if it forms here and goes up that way. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, again, a lot of the models yesterday showed a track like this. A couple of days ago, we showed a track like this. I still personally feel like that this is the most likely track. Uh, with a track like that, you know, we would definitely get some snow in these regions of the south. So uh, if you live in any of these areas, you know, just keep posted. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Again, I'm very active over there. I post pretty often. Uh, I'm going to, again, continue to get these videos out daily for everybody. If it gets into a super active pattern uh, or maybe as we get closer, I'll try to do a morning and an evening video. But that's all I've got for you today. I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas week and a happy and safe rest of their Sunday.